Hi guys, Mike here. In this episode, we are going to import custom fonts for our user interfaces. It is a necessary step to do before we can dive deep into creating our custom user widgets for the login, register, and the character screens, which are coming next in the series. So let's get started. So before we go and have a look at custom fonts, where to find them, where to get them, and before I show you which ones I selected for this series. First, let's have a look in the Unreal Editor and create some custom folders. So under Content Darkstar, let's create a new folder called Game Assets, which we will need later on down the road for several things like meshes and so on. So under Game Assets, let's create a subfolder called Fonts. And under here, we will, in a short while, create some folders for each font that we are using. Because each font will have like a master font file and the styles that it has. So like regular, bold, italic, and so on and so forth. So first of all, let's go have a look where we can find some fonts. And you can use the fonts that I'm using, or you can choose fonts on your own. So let's have a look here. There is a site called thefont.com and it has lots of fonts that you can use. And if you click like here under 100% free is on a public domain and 100% free and click submit, for example, then all the fonts that you can see here, they are usable 100% free. And I selected like techno, sci-fi, and this is where you can find all those different fonts that you can download and use. But what I did, and it's another kind of thing, is Google Fonts, which has more like professional fonts to use. And there are a lot of stuff in here. And what I found, or when I looked through, kind of I typed something like Darkstar, for example, and looked through all the fonts how they might look, which I like, which are more sci-fi like. And what I found are three fonts, Exo, Vajdani, whatever it's called, and Sarpanch. So this is kind of like if you may be familiar with the Expanse or even I think Star Wars and others, they kind of like have something that is similar to the, these fonts, which have a sci-fi look to it and we can use this for our user interfaces and for the login and all those screens that we're going to create. So what I'm doing now is select, I searched here for EXO. So for example, if you search for EXO, you can find there's two different ones. So look for these names and then download the family. So I'm downloading exo.zip, rashdani.zip, and sarpanch.zip. And if you're having a look at the Explorer and I put them under assets, so the, the project structure that we created, like projects, assets, docs, and Unreal that we have, these three folders, I put them here under assets. So, and now what I, I'm going to do is create a new folder called fonts and put them in here and extract them each into its separate folder so we can delete the zip files and under exo for example you see you have variable fonts we don't need these we need you can delete all that stuff and go to the static fonts so this is all the single TTF files that we need for all the styles like italic, extra bold, extra light, and so on. Move them into the EXO folder and the same stuff with here. Okay, this one only has the TTF files and Sarpanch as well. So now we have our fonts directory with each of these. And what we can then do is import these into Unreal. But first, before we do that, 
let's create the three font names as a directory in Unreal as well. So let's go back to Unreal, right click new folder Excel, new folder Sarpanch, and the other was called Raj Dani or whatever. I'm probably butchering that name. So now we have these folders. Now what we need to do is let's start with Sarpanch, for example, because it has not so many fonts in here. Let's take the regular one. And the, the steps that we are going to do now is import one file over here. Then it asks us if we want to create the font asset, which we say yes. But we only need to do this once. So after we configure that, then we can add the other ones and say no. I will show you that. So let's take the Sarpanch regular, for example, and drag it in here. Move this aside. And now it says, would you like to create a new font asset? And we say yes. So what we can see is it put our font face, the regular, as a font face asset and a font asset. So what we can do now is rename this to Sarpanch, for example, and keep this as Sarpanch regular. And if we open that up now, you can see we, this is the font asset file, which has a default font family, which is Sarpanch regular. And now we need to add the other fonts. So now that we have our font asset, we can now drag in the rest. So except regular, drag in everyone here and now say no to all because we have our font asset. We don't need another one for this font type. So say no. Now we have all of these. Save them all. And now if we go back into our font asset, we can click add and select, for example, star patch black and rename it to black. So this is basically how you do it with fonts. You first create or import one file, one font face. Then it says if you want to create the font asset, you say yes. Then it has that as default font family. And you can see down here preview of the two fonts now, default and black. And then you would go in and add every other font face. So now we have black, add a new font and call it bold. Add new one, extra bold. And you can see it down here, it adds to the preview of the file. And once we're creating our user widgets and have like a text widget, then we can sele and select the font and select the font faced based on what that font, what we have defined here. So now it's just stupidly adding these fonts. You can only create them like font faces, like one time medium regular we have semi bold and that's why I why I did like Sarpanch exo has like tons of font faces and I will do this behind the camera I leave it also for you to, to do everything and so like for the font families you can really add all those fonts and so we have like also a fallback font family that we could add um, but we haven't any other installed so we remove that we could add that later if we want but now i would i will just leave it like this so we would save it now we have the sarpanch font imported let's go to rajdani do the same thing the regular first say yes then it creates the font asset and the imports that font face save that and then we would go and 
import all the others with no to all. Save these. Let's import Exo also. And you can see like Exo has 18 items. So this is, takes a long time to um, add to the font asset. So let's add the regular. Yes. Rename it to Exo. And then import everything. Besides that, no to all, save all. And you can see now we have those fonts. Now you would go in, open up Rashdani. We have the regular, click add font, and then we would need to type in to select the font face and let's say bold and so on. So this is how you would do it now for the other fonts. So go ahead, I'm finishing this off camera and what you can do now is either do what I did, use those three fonts or like I mentioned, go either in Google fonts, type in something that you can see, okay, oh, some text that would look similar and see if there's a font that you would like for your user interface. Or you can go to thefont.com and select 100% free and select sci-fi or do some other stuff. You might go in later as well for when it comes down to modeling and so on. There's like stuff like stencil army that we would Kind of like here use for like for warning text and stuff put on the walls. These are cool fonts to use for it. But for now, just uh, select the fonts you want. I selected these three and then import them in the game assets fonts. And for each font file, create a folder and then start by adding the regular first for and create a font asset and then import the rest of the fonts and then you would just need to go into the font asset and add these fonts by hand each of them and once that's saved what we can do then do is let me um, open source tree I might make some changes then but for now you can see under file status we added all these U asset files so what we can do is say stage all and then create a comment, added custom fonts, commit, push it to our DevOps repository. And these U assets are LFS files. And there's one thing before I forget it, I made a mistake. I kind of like had in my mind because in Earlier I thought, okay, I start with episode zero, which would be the overview and the first episode, which which would be the first episode where we really start creating our project and stuff. But episode one is the actually the overview video. So each one of these tags is one episode behind. So let's just delete episode three, delete episode two. I should have clicked that, remove it from remote as well. Oh well. So now that we can go in here again, and now we can say, okay, initial commit of UE5 project, that was episode two. So let's add a tag and also push the tag to origin so that it's automatically pushed to the repository and call it episode to add the tag. This would be episode three. And that error meant, okay, that I forgot to push the delete. So let's delete this tag episode three in the Azure 
DevOps repository, go back to source tree, add this tag again. So I removed the tag here as well. And let's start from fresh. So tag, push tag, and call it episode three. This is live <laughs> error handling. So now MM Core plugin edit, that was episode four. Add the tag. And I'm not adding a tag yet for episode five because I'm still have to add the other fonts here, make changes. So the final changes I will then commit and add for episode five that tag. But now you've seen, okay, now the, the tags are now correct. And this is how you can remove them and add them. So yeah, this is it for this episode. So you learned how to add custom fonts to the project. So it's like I said, a short video. And in the next video, we are really getting into coding. So the whole login procedure, login register, character create, character select, and so on. These are the user widgets, the screens, dialogues that we are creating. These are really kept simple. So these are not like the final versions you would have for the project, but this gets us started with the project now with programming and stuff. So see you guys, I guess, then in the next video.